ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان الاستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله واهلها في النار وعياذا بالله واياكم من النار ايها الاحبه في الله this is the first dars in our study of qawaid al arba or the four principles by imam muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahmatullah alayh and without going extensively into depth about the great imam because his history is fairly well known but the imam was a mujaddid meaning that he revived the call to tawhid and the call to ahl sunnah the call to the da'wah to ahl sunnah and that he was a imam salafi in aqida in minhaj in his methodology his understanding of the religion and he strove in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utmost and there is no doubt immense controversy over Imam Ibn uh, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab rahmatullahi alayhi and his dawa and most of the controversy comes from the people of innovation and desires who attack his dawa and say things like that he was a takfiri and try to attribute the extremism and the takfir that uh, takes place in this modern day age and this is where the term uh, has evolved that people refer to the dawa of the sheikh and those who hold him to be a great imam and read and teach his books as wahhabis or uh all kind of other names that they refer to ahl sunnah but however ahl sunnah does not hold the imam to be above his status but we believe that he was a great imam who revived the call to tawhid and the madhhab of the salaf of this ummah and with that the kingdom of saudi arabia is still adherent to that minhaj of the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah in their institutions and in the creed that they propagate ahabbat fillah the book we're studying qawaid al arba the four principles is a, a short treatise by muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahmatullahi alayh and this treatise along with his book usul al thalatha al usul al thalatha the three principles and kitab at tawhid kashf al shubahat and the many other treatises that he has in his fatawa which which from his asloob or way of writing was he kept things very simple and we'll try our best in teaching this treatise and in our study of this treatise to keep it very simple first and foremost the term 
Qawaid. It comes from the Arabic word Qaida. And Qaida meaning referring to a principle or referring to uh, a foundation or something which holds up something else. For example, you can have the Qawaid in a house. And that means those are the pillars of that house, part of the foundation. And one of the reasons this treatise is referred to as Qawaid is because with the Qawaid that are in this treatise, the servant distinguishes between Tawheed and Shirk. And it allows a person to understand the doubts or ways other religions or methodologies can be refuted with the Quran and the Sunnah. So this is one of the reasons why it is referred to as Qawaid al-Arba, the four principles, because these four principles, they are principles uh, of Tawheed, of the of monotheism, of Islamic monotheism. And with regards to that, we'll begin the treaties and we ask that Allah, the Almighty, accepts our good and forgives our evil and blesses this to be a means for us to come closer to Him and puts barakah in our dars. And may Allah bless us and you with Jannah of Rados. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. First and for, foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Tawheed, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنُ وَالْإِنْسِ لَلِي عَبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in jinn except with the purpose of of worshiping me. That means our purpose in this life is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem, Ya yu an nas abudu rabbukum, Alladhi khalakakum, Walladhi na min qablakum, La'allakum tattakoon. O you mankind, Allah addresses mankind, Worship your Lord, Who created you, And those who came before you, In order that you will have taqwa, And taqwa habati fillah, or piety refers to those commands adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning what he ordered us in the Quran and what was ordered in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because that is revelation as well. And staying away from his prohibitions. Both of those components make up taqwa, as some of the Salaf uh, sp spoke about. And Upholding this Tawheed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded mankind for this. And with that, whenever we have a principle in the Qur'an, whenever there's a principle that the ulama, they take from, and it is a principle, uh, take from the Nasus, from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a fiqh principle. And this principle is, Al-Amr Yafid Al-Wujub. That whenever you have a commandment in the Sharia, a commandment from the Quran or a commandment from the Sunnah, then the origin of that commandment is that it's an obligation. That means to fulfill that's an obligation. So in the ayat we mention, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you mankind. Worship your Lord. So Allah commanded us, A'budu Rabbukum. Worship your Lord. This is in the imperative form, letting us know that this is an obligation. Unless the exceptions to this principle in general is if you find something else from the Sharia, from the Quran and the Sunnah, to show that that command is no longer a command, as no longer wajib, but it goes to mustahab, it goes to something that is recommended. But you need dalil to show, you need evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah to show that that's no longer an obligation. So when Allah says, وَأَقِيمُوا salat," He's ordering you, that's in the imperative form, establish the prayer. That's a commandment that shows that it's an obligation unless we had dalil, which we have no dalil to show us that the salat is other than wajib. Salat is wajib. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith and said it distinguishes us between those, uh, those who disbelieve. The belie it distinguishes the believer from the disbeliever. All of that is because it's a commandment from Allah and His Messenger ﷺ. And this is also the madhab calling the tawheed 
calling to monotheism is the medheb of not just Ahlul Sunnah, but it's the medheb of the prophets and messengers, alayhim after the salatu wasalam. So this is what we should busy ourselves with. We should be calling the Tawheed, and this shows us the importance of studying a treatise like this, because it's a treatise of Tawheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةُ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْبُوتِ that we've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the ta'gut and in, in its various forms. And something else I want to mention as we're getting into the treaties that if there are questions, you can send the questions by email to the email which is attached to this dars. You can send those questions and I'll do my best to answer them or ask one of the scholars if it's something that requires that I am unable to answer or we need extra explanation. I will try to take the time to send it to one of the scholars or call one of the scholars and then we will have the answer for you in the next lesson. So if you have any questions, you, we'll deal with it that way. Uh, another beautiful thing with regards to the importance of uh, this treaties and da'wah to Tawheed. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمة الله عليه ومن تدبر ومن تدبر أحوال العالم وجد كل صلاح في الأرض بسببه توحيد الله وعبادته وطاعة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكل شر في العالم وفتنة وبلاء وقحط وتسليط عدو وغير ذلك فسببه مخالفة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم والدعوة إلى غير الله ومن تدبر هذا الحق ومن تدبر هذا حق تدبر وجد هذا الأمر كذلك في خاصة نفسه وفي غيره عموما وخصوصا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. A beautiful, beautiful statement that Imam uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah رحمة الله عليه said about Tawheed. He said whoever contemplates the situation in the world, they will find that every rectification in the earth. The reason for it is monotheism or tawheedillah, is the oneness of Allah and worshipping Him and obedience to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And every evil in the world and fitna and trial or test and deprivation and the reason for your enemies overcoming you and other than that, the reason for it is differing with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and calling or supplicating or worshipping other than Allah. And whoever contemplates this with its true contemplation, they will find that this is the real situation within themselves, meaning related to your own problems, your own life issues, and other than it in general. And us and uh, with regards to specific issues in the world. And then he says, وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ فِي اللَّهِ Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab rahmatullahi alayhi, he began his treaties in his introduction with a supplication. And he said, after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, أَسَلَ الْكَرِيمِ رب العرش العظيم أن يتولاك في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يجعلك مباركا أينما كنت وأن يجعلك ممن إذا عطي شكر وإذا ابتلى صبر وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء ثلاث عنوان سعادة إمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب said بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم he began his treaties by saying in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And this was the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam to begin his treatises with the Bismillah. He said that he began by supplicating. He said, I ask Allah the most generous, the Lord of the mighty throne, to protect you in this life as well as the hereafter, 
to bless you wherever you are and make you from those people who if they are given they become thankful and if they are tested they are patient and when they sin they seek forgiveness for those are three signs of happiness ahabtifillah that is also from the madhab of the salaf to for the alam or the scholar to supplicate for his students and one of the reasons for this is to soften their hearts to what they are going to be taught so you'll find this any in most situations that if you do something to soften the hearts of the people they'll be accept they will accept your advice or they'll be more accepting of your advice if you supplicate for them if you say may Allah forgive us in you may Allah guide us in you may Allah bless us and bless you then that opens the heart because who doesn't want blessings who doesn't want forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i think none of us will answer and say that we do not want those things from Allah azza wa jal and with regards to uh, what the Imam said in the du'a, he said, I ask Allah, the most generous, the Lord of the throne, of the great throne, to love you in this life as well as the hereafter. And to make you bless or to bless you wherever you are. And to make you of one of those who when they are given they are thankful when the imam said and yatawallaka fi dunya wal akhir may allah love you or protect you in this life as well as the hereafter imam or sheikh uh ashatri hafizallah ta'ala he said in his explanation of this he said al wilaya no ain he said that the wilaya or this protection from allah is of two types he said the khas and the am the khas meaning the specific and this is for ahla taqwa wal iman so this is not just all the believers not all the the muslims cuz not all the muslims have a high level of iman or a high level of taqwa and have combined both of those things we all have some iman or we're not muslim if you don't have any iman or when you say someone has no iman that means they have they are not a muslim but the fact that a person is a Muslim, they have some iman. Even if they commit zina, if they commit adultery, if they drink wine, whatever they do, they still have iman as long as they're in the fold of Islam. Even if it's weak. So this wilaya, this protection that's a specific, is for the people who have strong iman and taqwa. And they fear Allah and they stay away from His commandment. The muhsanun, these people are on another level. And the general protection is for all of the Muslims. All Muslims have a general type of protection from Allah Azza wa Jal. And when the Imam also mentioned, when he said about the person, about thankfulness, Sheikh Shatri mentioned something very beneficial. He said, how is thankfulness? How do we have thankfulness? He mentioned three things. He said, first, one of the ways of showing that you have thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowing the blessing is from Him and having this in your heart and being certain. So, for example, if you are married to a righteous spouse, then being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is believing fully in your heart that that is from Allah. You have a nice job, you have a nice salary, you come into wealth, you inherited something, you have something good, and you're trying to show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being certain in your heart that this is from Allah, that's one of the parts of, of, of being thankfulness. The second way is speaking about and affirming your thankfulness and attributing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ that uh, that as for the blessings your Lord's blessings or the blessing from your Lord then speak about it 
showing us that we should speak about the na'mah Allah has given us. When Allah has blessed us with something, think about, uh, uh, mention it to people. Not out to brag, not to make people envious, but you should be giving that thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that, that the na'mah is from Him. That that great, that, that, that whatever Allah gave you, that na'mah is from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third thing he mentioned, he said, and using the blessing for Allah's pleasure. So if Allah favors you with wealth, that you use it to spend in His cause. You use it to, uh, you know, build a masjid, to seek knowledge, to sponsor a talib al-ilm, to do whatever, to take care of your family, to take care of others, to take care of uh, miskeen and fuqara and people who have need, to help a Muslim out of hardship, to even help a non-Muslim out of hardship, to encourage them, to show them the gentleness and the righteousness of Islam. That's the way you show thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is with those three, uh, those three means. And when the Imam said, we the ubtila sabr. And when this person is tested, or when you're tested, that you're patient. Patience, ahabati fillah, is many of the Imams, uh, the Imams of the Salaf that they mention, and I think Ibn al-Qayyum especially wrote extensively about this, about patience, in some of his treaties. And he mentioned three types of patience. A sabr ala ta'a, with da'wah, that a person has patience with regards to obedience to Allah, meaning staying away from the Muharram, uh, uh, by doing that which is wajib, Allah calls you to prayer, you pray. That takes patience. It's not easy to wake up in the morning for Fajr and use ice cold water to and get yourself out of your, out of your bed and, and, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is patience with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or to make the hajj that requires patience. Or to do talib al-ilm. Or to pay zakat. You don't want to get rid of your wealth. You're, you're stacking up your money. But if you're spending it in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a type of patience. You're illustrating patience. And in da'wah, patience in da'wah. Maybe no one listens to you. Maybe people attack you. Maybe people curse you and make takfir of you. It requires patience. The second type of patience he mentioned a sabr ala masiya, a sabr, a sabr ala masiya or ala masiyatillah. Patience with regards to disobedience to Allah, meaning that you are patient by avoiding being disobedient to Allah. Allah says, "Don't curse one another." Allah says. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be making takfir of one another. Allah commands us not to commit zina. Allah commands us not to drink alcohol or, or, or prohibits us from these things. So those things which we're prohibited from, it requires patience to refrain from that. To hold your tongue and not backbite requires patience. To not uh, commit zina requires patience on your private parts, etc. And the third type of sabr, Sabr ala aqdar, meaning patience and the qadr, patience with the uh, with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa taala. This also requires pay, uh, uh, it requires patience. And how are we patient with the qadr? How can we be patient with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa taala? Sheikh Shatri also mentioned three ways. That this uh, this this takes place. That you're patient. How do you show patience when a trial befalls you? When you have an illness? When you lose a child? When your parents die? When you uh, are seeing people around you killed? Whatever the situation. Number one, f uh, you show this patience for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, not the praise of the people. Having ikhlas, sincerity to Allah. This, <coughs> the second way, habitifillah is being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and not despairing. Being pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not having despair. And the third way of being patient is pa being patient in accepting this, the trial that has befallen you at the beginning of that test, as the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in the authentic hadith. 
so that it's not the patient doesn't necessarily grow although you can become stronger in the patients but the point is is that when that test comes to you that you don't despair you don't pull your hair out and start screaming and hitting the ground and beating people or beating yourself and doing all those things of jahiliya and then after a while you show pay, think you're showing patience because you calm down but instead it's at the beginning of that trial qadr allah wa uh, and and just being thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua supplication ibadah doing obedience to allah azza wa jal so those are the ways in which we uh, can show patience with the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then when the Imam, Imam Ibn Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahmatullah said, with adhnaba saghfar. And when they commit sin, they seek forgiveness. Forgiveness, as we know, is an incredibly important aspect of Islam. We should always seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, a sin, uh, a benefit that uh, Sheikh Shatri mentioned, he said, a sin is not always a sign of the low status of a servant, the fact that they committed a sin. But what illustrates the lowly status is refusing to seek forgiveness, as no one is perfect or free from sin. So that's where the person is really lower, lesser in status. The person who does sin and doesn't seek forgiveness and repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they maintain their sin and they don't even say istighfar. Or they act and, and feel as if they haven't even made a sin. The Prophet sallallahu said, Kulu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayina tawabun. That all the children of Adam commit sins. And the best of those sinners is those who make Repentance. And the Prophet Wasallam said that he made uh, istighfar more than 70 times a day. And I believe in another narration, 100 times. This is the Prophet Wasallam. What about us? He was the one who was forgiven for and would stand in the night prayer and mention that he was, for, you know, and it was known he was forgiven for the, that which took place before and that which would take place after. He was forgiven for any sins or shortcomings. Alayhi salatu was salam. This is the case of our NBA. What about us? What about us? So reflect on that. So this is a beautiful supplication by uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and we're going to try to keep our study our sittings as brief as possible, but we also want to gain as much benefit as possible. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ilm and nafia, wa rizq and tayyibah, wa amal al-mutakabbilan, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.